how are you all doing i hope you're all doing fine welcome back to my channel thank you so much for returning back here if you are a returning subscriber thank you for your love and your support i really appreciate much but if it is your first time here on my channel hello welcome to my channel please before you leave remember to subscribe and when you subscribe click on that notification bell you will find it down there so that you'll be the first one to be notified whenever i upload a new video i promise you you will always enjoy every content that i upload on this channel so dear friends in our today's video we are going to be having a story time of judith's love story just like i promised you guys because i know most of you have been waiting for this video and in our last video those of you that watched it oh my god you were super super angry at ama some of you are like judith please drop his phone number and we are going to show him fire <laughs> I totally understand you guys because what this armor did to Judith was really a lot, a lot. But like she said in the last video, it was just the beginning of terror. So we are going to be continuing from where we stopped. If it is your first time to watch this love story, please go back and watch part one, part two, part three, then return back here for the last part. So that you get to understand better this love story and i repeat i will be telling you things into details not just to scare you guys or just to make content not at all so that you is watching this video and you are online dating up searching you come across a guy he tells you he's looking for a submissive woman he is looking for a slave then you get to know or you gain experience of what that guy means and you run <laughs> yeah you don't find yourself in a situation that judith found herself in so let us continue with this love story so dear friends judith tells us used to work a lot a lot guys could wake up very early in the morning prepare breakfast and after breakfast is done, you know, Ama has taken his breakfast, then could follow dressing him up. Yes, could help him, you know, put on his pant, <laughs> oh my goodness, his shirt, and could tell Judith, a woman must do that. Put on his socks, and when all that is done, he is about to go out. Judith was supposed to go at the door, wait for him, and help him put on his shoes, you know, and tighten them up. And sometimes, guys, Judith tells us, Amma could get angry for no reason and start, you know, slapping her or punch her on the face, tell her, why did you tighten so much this shoe? What is wrong with you? Why don't you know what you're supposed to do? Oh my God, this lady suffered really this guy was using her as a slave be very very careful dear beautiful ladies i don't wish to ever hear a story like this from you guys especially my babies you guys that always watches my videos please please that is why i'm taking all my time to narrate to you this story in details i repeat so yes guys after all is done then could go to office and start working again then return back home in the evening start working on ama tells us sometimes could sleep standing due to the tiredness was like bella i turned into an old woman i was no longer myself and what is more annoying Amma could take photos of her, you know, looking like that with uncombed hair and send it to her family, her friends. And her friends could be really surprised when they could get those photos of Judith looking like a mad woman. Could be like, Judith, what is going on? Are you okay? Why is your hair like that? Why is that you stopped taking care of yourself? then judith could you know bring excuses you know a lot of work here and even the money i get it is not all that enough i only send it back home so that is why but he was doing all that to humiliate her yeah that's the only reason 
So guys, Judith's life continued like that. And then Amma sometimes could ask her, how is your family? How are they doing? Then Judith could be like, they are okay. They are fine. Then he could say, I want to talk to them. Let me talk to them. So he could talk to Judith's younger sister who was taking care of Judith's kids and could ask her, do you need anything? Whenever you need something, please let me know. I can't just leave you with hunger. Please talk. <laughs> so Judith says all the money that she could earn from Amma, it was Amma who used to keep that money. She didn't have any bank account and was not supposed to stay with any money. So Amma could send money home, but it's not that he could send the whole amount that they agreed on, that $300 back to Zambia. No, he could send little that was not even enough. So all the time, the family wanted money to buy food, you know, pay the rent, and they kept on asking. So whenever they could get that chance, when Amma wants to speak to them, of course, they could ask money. Another thing that Judith said that when she was in Zambia, she used to work and the money that she earned and could manage it. But having someone managing money and you're not there, <laughs> yeah, they manage it differently and they have the expectations that you are in Europe. So whenever they could get that chance from Amma, they could say they need money to buy for food. There is no this, there is no that. And Amma could send. But immediately after he could send that money to Judith's family, could tell Judith, you need five. Come and get five. Could order her to lower her pants and then could start whooping her butt with all his energy, guys. He tells us he had that strong stick and could use that to whoop her butt. Oh my God, even the salary that she was entitled, you know, to get from him, whenever he could send amount of that salary to her family could beat Judith up. She also added this detail that Bella, sometimes it's not that he sent even all that much money, no. Even if it is just $20, $20 Bella, I could get punished for that. Imagine guys, it really broke my heart. Someone suffering that much, someone being beaten up just because of $20. So guys, the beatings continued. And tells us sometimes he could just wake up in the morning. They're getting ready, you know, to go to work. Then tell her, no, I want to beat you first before the day starts so that you pay for any mistake that you will do during the day. Could beat her up, beat her up. Then after that, could cry and cry and cry. Later, get ready, go to work. But when they return back home in the evening, could call her, come here, I need to beat you. Then Judith could be like, but you punished me in the morning. He could tell her, you are not supposed to tell me what to do. If I say I want to beat you, I want to beat you. So could beat her up again and again and again. So guys, like I said in the last part that I did, Judith could wake up in the morning and the first thing she was supposed to do before preparing breakfast or anything is to go to Amma and say, good morning, my master, I am your slave. So apart from that, there were other rules that she was supposed to follow. So here, Judith tells us, Amma had this tendency. Guys, this is very, very funny. <laughs> you will see me laughing. Yes, I can't pretend to put a very serious face whereby really this is funny. But it doesn't mean that I'm enjoying what Judith went through. Not at all, guys. But if there is a part we need to laugh, we laugh about it. The story is already and to remind you it is the past you know things that judith went through yeah so forgive me because i know you bella why are you laughing <laughs> this is the real talk okay i have to be real with you <laughs> yeah so judith tells us amma had this tendency whenever they could be in the car 
Amma is driving, Judith was supposed to be the one to direct him on what to do. So when they are on the street lights, <laughs> Judith was supposed to pay attention to the street lights, the color that comes. So if it was red and they stopped, when it turns green, Judith was supposed to tell Amma, it has turned green, it's green now, let's go, it's green, it's green, let's go. And then Amma could go. <laughs> oh my God. Then when it comes time for him to park the car, still Judith was supposed to be the one to tell him, it's free, it's free, you can park, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this guy was sick sick here in the mind who does that so with this judith was like bella i turned into a driver <laughs> without driving any car so one time they had gone to the supermarket and as Amma was parking because she had told him it's free it's free you can park there is a car that was coming by. Judith didn't see it. Oh goodness. Amma turned too violent and punched her on her nose. Was like, you have to be very careful. Your life is at stake here. You are supposed to tell me if there is a car. You tell me there is a car coming. But you did not do that. Judith, the only thing she could do is to cry and cry and cry and cry. And also, Judith explains to us why Amma was using her like that. The explanation that Amma gave to her, that she is supposed to be the one to direct him on what to do while driving. If it is to stop, you stop. There is a red light. If there is a green light, please move. If there is a car coming, you need to tell him, there is a car coming. Please, please, there is a car coming. Because he had a back pain so turning his neck it could pain him very much so we see that Amma was making Judith live a living hell in Albania but she tells us not only Amma there is this lady called Lady D who used to work at Amma's office this lady hated Africans she was a red plus Amma was a red tells us I was discriminated, not in the streets, no, with the people I worked with and with Amma at his house. So this lady D all the time could find something, you know, to talk about so that Amma can punish Judith. Simply, she hates Africans. So tells us this incident that happened. Amma wasn't around that day and Amma's son was painting the gate. So Judith had to help him, you know, to paint the gate. Lady D was there. So they painted that gate and everything turned out great. Judith was like, Bella, I did all dirty jobs. Something that I was regretting because in my country, Zambia, I was a hotel manager. I had people reporting to me. But arriving in Albania, I had to do all those dirty jobs. And anyone that is watching this, Judith says, <laughs> you'll be like, so Judith, if you are a hotel manager, people are reporting to you, you know, a boss, <laughs> having a good salary, why did you leave? Tells us, Bella, I needed a change. I needed a change due to the humiliation that I went through with my ex-husband and you who watched this video from the start you remember i told you this whole thing of the ex-husband will keep repeating or you'll keep on hearing it till the end here we are again judith is telling us wanted a change due to what the ex-husband did everyone in that town where they lived could look at her as if she's a stupid woman so things were here that is why Judith decided that I need a change and also was like I don't know if I knew all this could have happened to me if I could have come to Albania I really don't know the answer if yes or no because I couldn't keep up with all that was going on so back to the story 
After finishing painting, then Ama returns. So when Ama came back, Lady D told, Oh my God, your son did a very good job. Look at that gate, the way it is shining. But that black woman, that African woman, is very, very lazy and was so slow. Immediately, Ama calls Judith. Judith, come here. Why are you slow? Why are you so lazy? Lady D has told me everything. You don't bring anything to the company. Money is only going out. You're just here. All you do is being lazy, 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 lazy. And Judith tells us, has never been lazy and she is not a lazy woman could do her best you know to show Amma that you know I work good everything that you told me I do it Amma couldn't see that plus there is this lady D that is adding fuel to fire so Judith told Amma but why is this lady treating me like that yes my country might be poor yes I might be coming from the poorest continent but is it my fault why can't she leave me alone Amma couldn't listen but stay on the side of Lady D I kept on yelling at her telling her that yes Lady D has said she was very very slow and Africans are very very lazy and then started telling her pick that paper on the floor do you think this is Zambia that dirty country oh my god guys I remember I did a video I talked about guys that are racist these white guys that we all want that we all are searching for on online dating sites not all white guys are into black women some will want to date you some will pretend to like you just to practice all the rest on you and judith's story is a vivid example of what i said two years ago in that video so Judith tells us, oh, when she was narrating this story, was like, Bella, that man, I don't know what to do to forget him. Only God knows. But I will never ever forget Amma, what he did to me. He traumatized me. Every single day, the trauma could multiply. So dear friends, in the second part, I told you when Judith was getting ready to go to Albania, I was like, guys, you should be careful. You're traveling to see a guy, you are traveling as who? So this Judith, <laughs> when she was traveling, didn't even know where she stands, whether she is an employee, a normal employee, or she is a girlfriend, his woman, no, wasn't sure. And even arriving there, things were the same. Because tells us, everyone at office, when their birthdays could come, they could be celebrated. But Judith never. Plus the discrimination, because Lady D hated African people so whenever there would be a party you know they prepare food and all that Judith was told to only stay in the kitchen she is not supposed to touch the food or seen you know holding food <laughs> bringing it out so that other people can eat because if Lady D sees that then is not going to eat that food because she's very very picky that could hurt Judith a lot, being discriminated in that way. So she could just sit there, cry and ask God, God, what is my fault? What is my fault, God? And cry and cry and cry. Yes, that is how her life used to be. And yes, when Alma could find her crying, why are you crying? She could tell him, I don't like how Lady D is treating me and the way you are treating me. It's not fair at all. Why would she say that I am the laziest person whereby I am not? Alma could be like, don't tell me what to do. So she kept on questioning herself. What is my position here? Because at the office, no one considers me as an employee. At home, I'm not standing as his woman or his wife. No, the only thing I'm used for is to 
his eggplant that is small as a thumbnail. So guys, after one year of Judith being in Albania, it was time for Judith's son to go to secondary school. And Judith had promised the son that she is going to take the son to a boarding school because it was his dream to go to a boarding school. <laughs> and being started in the boarding school, guys, I can feel Judith's son, yeah? Because even me at some point, in my O level, it was a day school whereby you go in the morning, in the evening, you go back home. But A level, I wanted a boarding school so bad <laughs> and yes guys in my advanced level i went into a boarding school i was super super happy <laughs> so that is why i'm telling you i totally understand judith's son so when that time came ama told her no there is no money we haven't put money apart all i do is to send money home money home money home but told her i'm going to give you like a birthday present <laughs> So increased her salary to $500 and told her, I'm going to help you send $300 to your family so that your son can go to a boarding school. And the $200, we are going to keep it. He used to keep her money. So Judith was like, okay, thank you. Was super, super happy. And when that money was sent, Judith's mother had to call again and was like, it's not enough. They still need to buy more things for the son to go to that boarding school. Also buy food. So the money that was needed is a thousand dollars. So what Ama did, yes, he sent that a thousand dollars to Zambia. But Judith tells us, Bella, I suffered for that money. I suffered. The guy could beat me up. So all day long, Ama could be like, I've sent a thousand dollars to your country, to your family, <laughs> and you're here. You're not bringing any money. Also tells us at that same, same time that Ama had sent a thousand dollars to her family back in Zambia. There is something that was disturbing him. As you all know, Ama had lots of medical issues. So they gave him some medications, but they were not helping him. Oh my goodness. Judith suffered even the more, you know? He could tell her, you are here, not bringing in any money. You're not even helping me with these medicines. But what could have Judith done? <laughs> to help him with those medicines. <laughs> he kept on blaming her, shouting at her, beating her up. It's like that money was paining him very, very much. Whereby Judith says, this guy was leaving his nature on me. That a thousand dollars was just, just a very small thing compared to all the things that Amma was doing to her. So due to all the abuse, that Judith went through was like, Bella, it reached a point I didn't know who I am. And one day, Amma tells her they should go shopping. So when you hear shopping, what comes into your mind, you be like, ah, maybe I'm going to be spoiled. So yes, they go for shopping. Arriving there, he buys useless things for her that costed $10. He bought for her one underwear and a pair of slippers. At the time they get home, this guy slaps her on the eye. The whole eye turns red. Imagine just for that $10. And it's not that Judith asked, take me for shopping. No, he could just be there, you know, wanting to beat her up, but no reason and be like, okay, take her shopping. You get a punishment and after her eye turned red what this stupid guy does tells her to smile to the camera so that he can take her the photos so he takes the photos and sends them back home to her family her dad saw the photos and was asking judith what is wrong with your eye but she didn't have any explanation couldn't tell her family what was going on. Could just say, oh, it is, it is just like that. Mm. So cried a lot and I was talking to herself like Judith. 
your family is not even getting enough money you know like the way it is expected and you are here suffering but again remembered i am his you know he told me he was looking for a so i am his i don't even to ask myself lots of questions but i have to see the way forward and also tells us saturdays were her worst days because they could go shopping for foodstuffs and whenever they could reach there this guy could be agitated could be yelling at everyone even the cashiers like everyone was looking at them as if they are not normal people <laughs> before they used to go with the ex-wife for shopping but when she saw all that drama I was like no <laughs> Every Saturday she could be like, no, I'm not feeling well. I'm not going with you guys. So they could go do shopping. And after shopping, then they could first stop at the office, drop some foodstuffs for the office, and then the remaining take them home. Judith tells us at that moment, the guy could be shouting, put this here. I told you to do this. Why are you putting it there? Come here. Oh my God, it is yelling, shouting. Judith could be shivering and trembling due to all the insults that she was getting from Ama. And that was every Saturday. It was supposed to be like that. Yeah, no changing. Like maybe today he's calm. No way. So after dropping the foodstuffs at the office, they could go home. Arriving home could order her. Put all the food on the table, you know, everything that they have bought, the groceries. Take the pictures. Open the fridge. Take the pictures and send them home so that they see you are living a good life. You have everything here. But that one could backfire Judith because after getting the photos and they don't know her real life in Albania, what is happening... <laughs> they could ask for money and yes Amma could say I am going to send you don't worry <laughs> what do you need but after sending punishment and cause Amma had promised from the start I will buy you this promised the kids a lot of things <laughs> like I'll buy you bicycles I'll buy you this I'll buy you everything that you need promised her parents that he's gonna build a house for them so they were expecting all that and Judith's mom yes could ask things from um i want this i want this i want that to an extent judith was like mama please stop stop it manage what we have like sending a message to her that you know i don't like this whole thing of you asking money from ama and one time had to talk to her mom explain the bit and her mom understood but yes the kids couldn't understand at all after seeing the photos of the foodstuffs they would also you know wish to eat good not eat exactly what she is eating but at least eat better live better so this whole thing affected judith a lot a lot and then Amma started forcing her by force you have to take calming tablets this week is gonna be a very bad week so you have to take these tablets to calm your nerves could be like but i don't need them he could say you have to take them and whenever she could take those tablets could feel a lot of pressure in her brain and guys do you remember when Amma asked judith at the time she was in zambia if she accepts polygamy <laughs> so the time came Amma started chatting with a lady from ghana but that lady you know there were those ladies that are not settled yet. <laughs> so Amma could ask some advice from Judith. This is crazy, eh? <laughs> About the Ghanaian lady and Judith could be like, but Amma, this lady, I don't think she is good for you. <laughs> but Amma could say, you're jealous, you're, you're only jealous. <laughs> because one time was talking to Amma on a video call, the Ghanaian lady, and yes, of course, Judith was there because Amma could call her, you know, come see her, tell her how life is, how I'm treating you good, you know, <laughs> tell her to come join us in this polygamy. <laughs> so yeah, Judith 
could be there, you know, listening. I'm not trying to put words in her mouth, you know, to convince the lady. And when she looked at this Ghanaian lady, it was like someone punched her on the face, okay? Her face was really big. But when Amma asked her, she was like, she hit her head <laughs> when she was going to the toilet at night. But Judith says, you know, we are Africans, we know each other. I saw the lady is one of those ladies that are, are not settled yet. <laughs> In Swahili, we could call a lady like that, mapepe. <laughs> and I'm a pepe, you know, yeah, not settled. <laughs> So told Ama, but wapi, Ama didn't listen, <laughs> kept on chatting with her and started doing, you know, the plans to bring her to Albania. Then, as they were doing the process of her going to take a blood test, then send the results to him, but that sickness, it wasn't just a simple sickness, no, Judith tells us it was bad, really bad. So, how did it happen? Judith tells us Amma had this tendency of waking up in the middle of the night. He starts walking around the house, you know, talking to himself, I don't know, analyzing, thinking of business. So that night, he woke up and started walking around the house and thought the door of the kitchen was closed. Oh my God. This guy fell down on the surface and when he fell down, he hit his spine, you know, his spine cord. <gasps> Judith heard someone screaming and calling her name, Judith, come and help me. Then Judith woke up and tried, you know, to help him, but it wasn't possible because Amma was a very tall guy and huge, you know, with a huge, huge body. Had to call his sons and then they came, took him to the hospital. He stayed there for a day and then was returned home. When he returned home, hmm, Judith was like, it was the worst experience for me. Because he couldn't sit on his own. I was the one supposed, you know, to help him sit. Remember, he is huge. I was supposed to feed him and I was supposed to help him put on a diaper, make bear on the diaper, then after remove the diaper, clean him up, the smell, the smell, mm. it was like Bella, I suffered. So she kept on taking care of Ama. If he has doctor's appointments, she has to be there all day long and at night. Three months, guys, three good months. Tells us after that, she is the one that got sick, had a very strong pain on her back, you know, raising someone heavy like that because there was no one to help her. The sons could just come and bring what is needed that's it this lady was alone even talked to her friend back in zambia that i raised my kids yes at some point my ex-husband got sick but i have never ever experienced this also she thought going through all that with ama <laughs> helping him while sick it will maybe change the way he thinks and starts respecting her but nothing guys it kept on getting worse and with this i remember there is a lady a very close friend of mine that is going through a very toxic marriage and i remember even the first day this lady came to me you know to tell me of what is going on i've got enough experience guys i told her you know what this won't stop now it won't it will keep on getting worse don't think your husband is gonna change he will never change and guys it's been almost three years every time this lady comes to me is crying and crying that the situation is not changing but getting worse like i had told her from the start so if you are in a toxic relationship or marriage don't think maybe it will happen one day something to 
to make that guy change his mind and start being good no if he is a bad guy he will always be a bad guy let us shine our eyes i know guys you're tired of hearing she cried and cried and cried she suffered but this is the truth that is what was happening at that time so judith kept on crying and crying and telling herself i have to be strong i can't stand going back to my country i can't stand that humiliation because the kids have got their own expectations about their mother. The parents have got their own expectations. And how was she going to start all over again? Going back to her country. But it doesn't mean she was enjoying everything that was going on. No, it could hurt her. She could talk to herself like, I am suffering like this. My kids are not getting enough. My parents are not living a good life. But I'm here being treated like an animal. And another thing is, tells us, while in Zambia working, she used to do some, you know, <laughs> side hustle, this alaula thing, <laughs> and sell, then get some money, life keeps on going when she combines them with her salary. Life was good. The only problem was, you know, the whole humiliation of the ex-husband. But in Albania, she couldn't be like, okay, I am going to work for another person so that I have a side hustle and keep helping my family. No, it was not possible. She was supposed to work for only um, and the salary wasn't enough. So she sat down, told us sometimes could get sleepless nights thinking of how to help the family back home, how to improve her life. So talk to Amma and was like, Amma, can you please, you know, borrow me some money so that I can start a business back home to help me, you know, manage things. Amma was like, I will never ever invest in Africa. Do you see guys? Do you remember his promises? He promised to Judith that I'll bring you here after two years, you'll go back home, I'll open a business for you, we'll be business partners. But now the same same guy is telling her I will never ever invest in Africa. So that wasn't possible at all. It wasn't going to happen. Judith cried and was like, I really don't know what to do. At night could just stay awake and tell God, show me the way out. But sometimes could get side thoughts. Tells us one time wanted to ask Amma the direction to the sea so that she can just go in the deep of the sea and drown herself down there because it was too much her body her soul she was tired and we can understand her guys we that have followed her story from the start till now another thing is Amma had promised to build a house for her parents and tells us the house that she had built you know long time ago it was really almost falling apart because this lady comes from a very humble background you guys that watched from the start you can even remember the jobs that her parents used to do so the parents kept on waiting so that he can help them build the house he never did that also told the father to resign judith's father he will help the father with money to start a business this was like i can't start a business with you and you also work that won't happen so this man had to resign from his job but Amma never sent even a coin so guys back to the Ghanaian lady yes she did the tests and sent the tests to Albania but because Amma was sick at that time did not take a look at those tests <laughs> it was Lady D that took in charge but the Ghanaian lady outsmarted Lady D, yes, because she hid some results. You're going to find out in a minute what did this Ghanaian lady hide. <laughs> so yeah, all plans were made and the Ghanaian lady travels from Ghana to Albania. Arriving in Albania was given her room where to sleep, you know, like how Judith was treated at first while waiting to do the tests again. <laughs> so they did the tests again. And when the results came out, this Ghanaian lady was HIV positive. 
So with the results in Ghana, this lady had to hide the HIV results. But being in Albania, maybe thought they were not going to do other tests on her. But Judith tells us it is God and she thanks God they did the tests again in Albania. Because if they did not do those tests, it means that Anna was going to be infected. You know, his immune system is already down and Judith too. So she was like, imagine Bella, I left my ex-husband because I was scared to be infected with lots of diseases and I come to Albania. Then I get infected by Ama. Bella, life is not fair. Life is so unfair. Yeah, this is what she said. So yes, she stayed in Albania for 10 days. And after those 10 days, when the results were out, what Ama did, deported her back to Ghana. Found this lady on Afro introductions. Judith tells us she has chatted with lots, lots of African ladies because that is his target. He's targeting a desperate women. Ama joined Afro introductions in 2011 and he has been banned on Afro introductions four times so this guy could chat with lots of ladies and could make judith too chat with those ladies from uganda kenya tanzania west africa oh my god nigeria cameroon all those countries and some ladies who are my babies <laughs> when they could hear all those nonsense <laughs> His approach, the long message, you have to respond the whole of it. They could block him. Those who could hear, I'm looking for a slave, they could block him. <laughs> but tells us some fell into his trap. Yes, they could send their new pictures. They could record themselves videos touching their goodies. <laughs> and they were ready to be into that polygamous marriage. Yeah, Judith says most of you, most of you that are on Afro introductions, you know this guy and even she suspects somewhere even her relatives you know because if you're from zambia and you know the surname or the tribe name like us tanzania we have tribe name <laughs> you know this is a chaga this is so says that some of the ladies they were even related who are chatting with her. Oh my God, guys, be careful. But another good news is that Ama is no longer on Afro introductions. <laughs> Eventually they had to ban him completely. <laughs> yeah. So guys, because Judith was really, really tired, started telling Ama that I'm so tired. I want to go back home. Sometimes, yes, she could tell him how she feels like wanting to take her life. So Amma could be like, don't worry, you know, everything will be fine. I'll give you money. You know, you'll go home to see your family, <laughs> to calm her down. Then changes completely and starts to be, beats her up. And after beating her, could say, I'm sorry, let's make peace. Let's shake hands. So he could manipulate her like that. He was really a manipulator not only an abuse, but also reached a point Judith was like, no, if I'm to go back home, I just want to remain poor, but in peace. I don't want anything to do with you completely. What I have seen, what I've gone through with you, it's enough. And Amma, remember, we will not live forever. Whether you are poor, whether you are rich, we will one day go. What you're doing to me, is unacceptable but you know this guy is sick already couldn't care her words so yeah i kept on insulting her could tell her you'll go back to zambia with nothing you know bad bad words that was her daily life so one time they had gone somewhere and then when they returned amma remained in the car judith went home assuming maybe amma you know will come later so she stayed there for some minutes then was followed by a call where are you come here then she was like what have i done now so she went and arriving there Amma was like why didn't you return to take me imagine guys 
So at some point, Judith was like, Bella, I wished all these things were happening to me in my country. Because you know, if you are in your country, you have your sisters, you have your friends, relatives, you meet, you laugh, you know, you reduce the stress. But in Albania, Judith was alone, alone, didn't have anyone to talk to and tells us she tried her best, could give Ama the best treatment that you can imagine. Even people around Ama could tell him, oh my God, you have got yourself a very good girl. But for him, <laughs> he could not recognize that at all, at all. So another day they go for shopping and after shopping, as they are going back to the car, they meet this black guy and tells us in Albania, the place where they were living, there were no a lot of black people. So that guy seeing Judith got excited and, you know, started greeting Judith. How are you? Where are you from? Oh my God. I'm attacked to the guy. Are you stupid? Do you know who she is? Do you know how she came here? Do you know how she lived? Oh my God, the boy was left surprised. Yeah, Judith felt very, very embarrassed, entered in the car and they returned home. Amma never wanted anyone to talk to Judith. And another thing, guys, Amma used to threaten Judith that I will kill you, I will kill you. And even if I kill you and no one is going to say anything, you are a black woman who will care. No one is going to care. But guys, attention, if you are in a situation like this, whereby a guy is threatening you, the guy is telling you there is no way out, you know, you have to depend only on him. He is everything to you. No one is going to help you. Never, ever believe that. They are telling you all that to scare you so that you can keep on following whatever they are telling you to do because the truth is it's not that if judith tried to look for the ways to get out of amma's life couldn't succeed she could have succeeded not everyone would be bad at you because i've had ladies that are going through you know toxic marriages toxic relationships they come and tell you oh my husband is saying if i leave him you know no one is going to help me and even if i get the help of the government yes i'm not going to be treated good <laughs> even if i try to look for a job with my african education i'll find a job of cleaning the stairs and they will pay me 400 euros per month whereby it's not true when you hear such kind of words go and make a research because we all know the minimum that you can get paid per hour for example in italy it is 10 euros per hour guys and it's not that if you do cleaning jobs then you are going to work for only one hour no <laughs> you work for more hours to earn more <laughs> and at the end of the month you won't have that 400 euros but a guy tells you such kind of things to scare you and be like no i can't go you know out you know outside of the world you know out of my comfort zone i have to still depend on him he is my salvation <laughs> no 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 it's not true so this is the exact thing that Amma was doing to judith i can keep no one is going to say anything i'm not going to go to jail and when you go back to your country you go with nothing you know such kind of things even the contract was saying something else because her contract was after two years she can return to zambia or can decide to look for another employer and continue staying in albania that was her contract but because of the threats judith did not look that deeply kept on listening to ama and following everything that ama was telling her to do sadly so guys there is nothing that ama did not do on judith because Judith tells us those first days when she was still at home, not going to work, but Amma could go to work, could order the ex-wife to come in the house, take photos of the fridge and you no know, control. <laughs> Imagine. And I remember there is a comment 
I got someone was like, Amma made the ex wife go crazy. It's true. It's so, so true. You can't go through all that abuse and still stay normal. So, so guys, Judith was like, Bella, I wish you could speak my, you know, local language. I could have explained things well because the way I'm explaining, I think it is not coming out like the way I lived these things. I can talk about this guy till sunrise. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy was very, very bad, very brutal. So one day they were going home, you know, walking by foot. And then Amma orders her that when we are walking, you are not supposed to stay in front of me. No, I have to be the one to be in front of you because I am a man. Second, you have to stay two steps backward. <laughs> me. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Crazy, crazy, crazy. That's the only thing I can say about this guy. And disgusting. And yes, guys, Judith tells us risked her life one day. Yeah, because they were going somewhere and she didn't know, but the car had some problems. So Amma was calling the mechanic guy and Judith came, wanted to enter the car because this guy was already agitated, <laughs> nervous. <laughs> he moved the car quickly, tells us if she didn't move, she could have lost her life. If not her life, would have lost all her toes and he didn't even say i'm sorry no told her i can i am going to kill you and started blaming the ex-wife toxic guys will never take the blame on themselves they will look for someone to blame on so we keep on with amas afro cinemas one time imagine this guy started blaming judith that you're the one infected me with throat cancer is there anyone started asking her questions is there anyone in your family with throat cancer judith was like i've never even heard of that i don't know why are you blaming me but amma the truth is i found you with one kidney your immune system is very down so why blame on me but later on came to find out no, he didn't even have that throat cancer. But the guy had lots of medical issues. Toast has had a wardrobe full of medicines, of everything. <laughs> the back, the legs, the pressure, everything, guys. And sometimes they could prescribe him some other medicines to buy or to treat maybe a new sickness that he has got. Could go because he's stubborn and take the wrong medicine. If anything goes bad, the blame is on Judith. You have infected me. It's you. All blames on her. So every morning Judith could wake up, could be like, God, again, I don't know how today will end. Yeah, that is how her life was. Then said something that really I was like, this is disgusting. Whenever Amma could go to the washroom, to Judith was supposed to be there. To do what? To take the toilet paper, the tissue, be cutting to pieces and giving it to Amma while he is in the washroom. At the same time, he could be talking, expecting Judith to respond so that she takes in all the smell, you know. Ah! Some people can be really, really evil, 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 evil. And when Judith could want to use the washroom, he could ask her, what are you going to do there? What are you going to do there? If Judith could be like, I'm going to, he could say, put fun, put fun. <laughs> so Judith here was like, so his was all that special and smelling better than me that is the meaning to an extent i told him you know what ama this is disturbing you i will just go to the bush you know and ease myself you know if it is a big problem for you you can't be all the time shouting at me put fun put fun <laughs> yeah and another thing that left me like what Judith says one time woke up in the morning was going to pee. As she sat, you know, to make pee, Amma entered. When Amma entered without even knowing, this guy urinated on her. 
Judith was like, how would you do that? And he was laughing about it, telling her, I thought you would like it. It's just a joke. Judith told him, it's not a joke because in my country, it is animals that you can be on so that other animals can come and eat them. I am not stop doing that she cried so so much and begged ama please ama let me live in peace i came here to work for my kids let me be why are you making me suffer like this this is too much this is painful and when we come to the goodies part there is something i told you that when a guy tells you oh i've got this fantasy don't ignore it and be like ah, i can handle these people with weird fantasies it's not that he stops at one no not at all he will keep on bringing more and more and more fantasies so with ama it reached an extent he started telling judith you know to leave where the dirty, you know products that place she should with her tongue To satisfy him imagine judith was like i have never done that in my life i know people do it but to me it was disgusting but i had to close my eyes and be like you know let me get the job done because the only thing that ama was doing is to use her to satisfy himself tells us he could tell her kneel down and then for him, he could just lie on the bed. <laughs> she made me laugh like a dead donkey. <laughs> and then put her head in a position. It is going to stay there. She will for hours and hours and hours and hours. And if he is not full, he could shout at her, yell at her and beat her up. So he could tell her, you know what brought you here, you must do it. And Judith tells you, dear ladies, be careful of these old guys. Their target is to desperate women in Africa. But your dreams are bigger than him. Your life will never ever match. And guys, the money that Ama could send to her parents, to her sister back in Zambia, could tell Judith his mother to write a report at the end of the month how she spent that money. I used this amount to buy food stuff. I used this amount to pay rent. She was supposed to do that, send the report so that she can be given another money. He could even jokingly laugh about it how he dominated her family. He was like, in the past, the colonists could go to Africa to colonize, but I am here, you know, in Albania, leading a family in Zambia. Everyone is listening to me. It's sad. But the thing that he forgot, Judith says, is that her family was just being patient with him. But after knowing everything that he did to her, they were disgusted. So things continued and he kept on chatting with different women on Afro introductions. Then came across a Ugandan lady, a very young Ugandan lady in her 20s and started luring her, you know, promising her the world, telling her, I'm going to change you to a better person. You better come, calling Judith, come, tell her, tell her how life is. Everything is going to be fine. You come here. So the lady eventually came with lots of expectations. Yes, they did some tests on her. And when the results came back, she had some infections, you know, like the ones Judith had. So it was treated, but Judith tells us the drama started because that girl came with lots of expectations and told Judith, I did not expect this. This is not what I thought I was coming to do. So she even took it badly than the way Judith took it. Could tell Judith, for me, I'm going to do my best to leave this man. So at that time, when that Ugandan lady came, Ama wanted the lady to go to the bedroom together. <laughs> they sleep in three. Judith stood on her ground, was like, no, 
I cannot risk my life. You're going to sleep with that girl when I leave this house. That is when you bring her to the bedroom. So she could sleep in a different room and Judith could sleep with Amma. <laughs> but because Judith at that time, she was super, super tired, started making a research and that's when she came to find out that her contract allows her to stay in Albania, allows her to stay and look for another job or can just decide to go back home. Then told Amma, I am leaving. Amma was like, no, you can stay here for five years and then that's when you can go. She was like, Amma, look here. This is the contract. Read it well. <laughs> if you're going to stop me, I am going to the immigration. And he did not want to get in trouble with immigration. So she started searching for jobs online and God is good. Eventually, she found that job. At first, worked with an Albanian family, a very good family. But later on, this family transferred to Bulgaria. So as I'm talking right now, Judith is in Bulgaria working with this family, tells us they are so good. They are treating her very, very well and she is at peace. So tells us the last days when she was still at AMA, you know, still looking for another job, had to go to online dating sites. Remember, said regrets joining Afro Introductions. But the only way to find her soulmate was through online. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't so easy for her to find a man, a man to love her in real life. So started searching and tells us, started watching my videos. Seriously, I was like, Bella, your videos helped me very, very much. I could watch those videos and note down everything. I had a notebook. And I could even write comments on your comment section wanting to reach to you. I don't know, but for some reasons, I couldn't get to you because I really wanted to talk to you. <laughs> so yes, she followed my advice and says my advice helped her because joined OkCupid and found the one, guys. The one, a very, very good guy, very caring guy has introduced her to the family all holidays off days they are together even christmas they are together with his family his family loves her so so much they are planning to go together to zambia you know <laughs> the introduction and, and later when they get married bring the kids to bulgaria live there happily ever after so judith right now is at her happy place but she will never ever forget what she went through with Amma. And some of you will have this curious question. Has Judith talked to her boyfriend about Amma? <laughs> Says a bit, not like in details, like I'm telling you here. Yeah. And I told you when you meet a guy, it's not that you start telling the guy everything you went through slowly by slowly. <laughs> Even when you get married, you keep on narrating of what happened. <laughs> yeah, because I know if this guy could have, you know, known the whole story from the start, he could have even got traumatized. But it was also risky for Judith to tell everything to the boyfriend without knowing him better. What if he is the same, same, you know, Amma's type? So wanted to first know the guy, you know, know me as Judith, <laughs> leave alone my past. Then later, tell the guy little by little. Let me hope this tip helps you. So with the Ugandan lady that Judith left at Amma's house, she later heard the lady returned back to Uganda because it was fights, fights, fights. Whenever Amma could tell her do this, she could be like, no, I cannot do that. And when Judith was about to leave, Amma could tell her, yeah, you have to teach him everything, how you satisfy me. <laughs> Judith was like, she's an adult. This lady has seen men, you know, <laughs> intimately there is nothing I can teach her. Plus, if you taught me, teach her too how to do things. <laughs> yeah, but she left and I thank God she got the courage to leave. And I thank God too for Judith to get the courage to leave this devil, Amma. 
Another thing that is really amazing, guys, Judith says that her dream is finally coming true of building a house for her parents. They have started already to buy for materials and her boyfriend is supporting her too. God is good. I'm telling you there is no hard situation that is permanent. Imagine all the things that Judith went through, but God saw her through. You know, she saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Let us all learn from her story. So quickly, I know this video has been really, really long. Judith's advice to you all that are on online dating apps searching. So her number one advice from her experience, she says, ladies, let us search for true love. Leave the material things apart. It's not telling you to date a broke guy or a guy that is jobless, no. But focus on true love. Because a guy can be rich, but his behavior, his character, how he treats you is really, really bad. So that is why she's saying better follow true love than focusing on material things. Her advice number two, know what you want and stand for it. When you do that, your life will become easy because if she had stood on her grounds, all she went through couldn't have gone through that, but came to stand on her grounds later, later. But you see, she was able to move out. So tells you do your best not to stay in the same situation like I have advised you already. Never accept any violence from a guy, any disrespect from a guy. So her advice number three, which is the last one, I'm going to be reading it for you. Okay? So she was like, find me a muzungu. Most people ask me about that. Even if he is an old man, an old muzungu, it's not easy to find that man, first of all. Take your time. Don't be with an old man. Use your hands and mind to upgrade yourself because these older men are not up to no good they are tired old school mind of treating women like slaves because i witnessed it girls let's find men who are strong who can stand for us who can fight with us who are still energetic and open-minded it's possible if you are searching whether on online dating apps or even in real life, please take your time, kneel down and pray. For sure, God answers. It's a matter of time. Might answer today or tomorrow, but above all, he answers. I wish you all the best that are searching. These are Judith's words. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video till now. I really hope you enjoyed it, you learned a lot. Please, if you have liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something. Watch my other videos too. They are super, super good. You're going to learn a lot. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Please join the family and thank you for subscribing. Comment below what you think about this video. Until next time, guys, I love you so much. You're always here in my heart. Ciao, ciao.